it's so hey. romantic. I mean, hi, everybody. I'm hey. having a romantic moment with my husband. Welcome to Sun and Neos Gaming. Yeah, welcome back. The show about good vibes and questionable gameplay. Always. Um, so we have to make sure that we have... Um, We're on our way to do right. something. I can't remember exactly with the Pikmin. Puny orb. We have to free like a few of them. What the hell is going on? You place the puny orb. I know, but look how happy they are. Madden and oh, available the, now. Okay, the epic. I downloaded the free game. The free game for today it looked good. It's like an RPG like thing. Oh, that was for last week. Yeah, it was um, last week's. But it looks yeah, fun. Yeah, uh, I can't remember the name of it. But yeah, it's it's like Souls like um, uh, RPG combat, but like castle metroidvania style mario you know we can't move from here until you take the orb out oh. okay so you need to bring back like more puny i think was the goal yeah our new That's house funny. has so much going on with the wildlife dang it i i pushed We've hammer got a lot of the same like raptors that we had in yeah. uh, Florida. There are red-shouldered hawks. There's some um, some barred owls, but there's also a great horned owl. Um, and we live. Uh, our house comes with uh, an acre of land, so there's a lot of like open space for these things just to kind of like hang out and soar. And um, we do have a little family of deer that likes to walk around the backyard. What I found kind of unique that I haven't experienced before is um, there's a buck that frequently visits <gasps> our yard. And he's a young buck. His antlers aren't like fully grown oh. in. What's what's going on? Oh, I, I just, I'm about to get really screwed over. I, I was try I was dependent guard on it. the multi-bounce. It didn't work. Can you guard a fire flower? No. I mean, I'm sure maybe. I, I don't think so. Yeah, um, the first night that we were here by ourselves, or the first day, we um, we went outside to just kind of sit on the deck. Because we have a huge deck that overlooks a like really green, just open backyard where there's yeah. like a creek at the bottom. We don't have any neighbors behind us or anything. And this buck just comes over to the fence and like comes into our yard and just stares at us. It was like as magical. soon as we sat down, I was like, "Wow, that's a that's a pretty remarkable encounter." It it and really he's, was. He's been in the yard like every day. He's got like a little routine, and sometimes his uh, family's with him. There's like four others, like younger deer and like other female deer. But they are so amazing to see. I've never had a buck like visit the yard before like that. This all looks very puzzly. Yes. What did that do? It's locking and unlocking a door. Oh, okay. There is another pipe to go upward. Oh, okay, backtracking. Oh, well that's good to know. Um, as a matter of fact, I should probably just save. I'm wondering though if logistically it's safe I should be locking this door. I'm gonna just gonna leave it unlocked. Cause I don't know. It's not clear what its purpose, like what its function is in this puzzle. Like why it, why it locks and why it doesn't. Shoot! Oh hey, what's this? Wow, my depth perception sucks. Well, this is adorable. But, okay. I am you know what it looks like? And the bubbles are kind of helping this. It, it looks like the... Um, like the nice. liquid that you dip your, like, bubble blower into before you blow oh, a bubble. Oh, yeah, sure. It, it's got, like, that same, like, shine with different colors. Yeah, I think I can make that jump. <laughs> Maybe I can't, but I'm just gonna. No, keep you can make it. Okay. 
The punies won't jump for whatever reason. They don't Which jump. makes you have me to feel like... Them. Or just kick them. I don't think I can kick the punies. What the hell? Okay, it, it's me. I know it's me. I'm I'm the problem. It's me. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> um. You did it. Cause watch this. Oh, will they all come over now? I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think it worked. Oh well. I've lost my punies. You certainly have. Oh shoot! <laughs> uh, that that this... was very Legend of Zelda. What? What even? It, it looked like a spider. It was like a Skulltella or something. Okay. Let's do a turtle. Just so we know what we're dealing with. This is useful. Jesus! That's a piter ick? Okay. I do not like Gumbella. God, she's obnoxious. That's why I give her an obnoxious voice. Well, Punies can't stand the, her. The sound bite that plays when she's talking sounds like a sped up chihuahua. Oh, I could see that. Like, it sounds like, like our, like my family's chihuahua. Just a little bit. Yeah, well, she's very barky. Yeah, something else we've experienced living in Pennsylvania is suddenly the food is like better. Oh my god, like Everywhere yeah. we go. Um, I think it's just because where we lived in Florida, the food and the food service was so horrendous. Yeah. That and the even experiencing a normal dining experience seems like above average. Well, the food us. here is so good. Yeah, it is. And um, like even we went to a Buffalo Wild Wings even. And, oh my like, god, that was so good. And, you know. It's, it's just like bar food, like Americana, but even that was like, it felt exquisite compared to <laughs> the fucking Buffalo Wild Wings we had in Florida, where I kid you not, I went into the bathroom one time. This has nothing to do with the food, but this was, I mean, the food wasn't great either, but I went to the bathroom and someone had literally diarrhea into a urinal. And it was like, it's probably gross to describe this, but. Um, it was like partially wet, but also partially caked. And it looked like someone had like thrown up on top of it as if the sight of it just like made them puke. So a lot of things feel like a life improvement. Absolutely. Moving here. I mean, it kind of is like, this is my, it's not my first professorship. But That's the it is part. kind of a, it's kind of a bigger professorship than I've had mm -hmm. in the past, and um, it just feels good to be moving up the rungs of my career, and like finally not being a student. Yeah. Like there are some people who are afraid of moving beyond the student phase. I'm like the complete opposite. Yeah, I really hated being yeah. a student. Well, in my thing, like I'm, I'm a very academic person, but as I as I grow older, I don't want the title. I don't know if I want the title of student anymore. No, and oh, like it comes with barely any benefits. It comes with a lot of degradation, and I'm just like I've been out in the professional world for so long yeah. that I just I don't want to do that to myself anymore. Well, like, a lot of graduate students are basically just floor mats. Like they're expected to do so much. Nice. And the thing is like, s my workload in the classes that I was teaching at a graduate level, I'm doing the same job now, but I'm actually getting paid for it. For sure. Which, you know, to me, it's like, I, I get it. Like you're not gonna pay a student like a, a lot of money, but like I'm doing this, Arguably pretty much the same job that I've been doing for like the last like five years. 
it's for all, like seven it's years. Arbitrary. And now suddenly I'm getting paid a lot of money to do it. And it's well, literally because I got this like pass, which is a PhD, which is essentially just a, a big like gate gatekeepy ticket to you getting a like job that pays well. Um, Cause for whatever reason you need a PhD to yeah. teach in this field. Yeah, and, I, uh, it, it's really, I, I, I don't agree with it. I mean, I worked my ass off to get that PhD, but well, I'm not really of, doing a different that, job now than I was. The minute that your title is student, like my, my conundrum is that the minute that your title is student, you suddenly just become lesser. It yeah, doesn't you matter what your skill, right? It doesn't matter your skill or your ability or anything. It's like, just suddenly yeah. you are lesser. Yeah, and, and I, it's, it's I, all about power dynamics and titles. And my thing is like, you know, you were technically a professor before you went to get your PhD. Yes. You were a professional, and you know, once you're a student, none of that matters because no, your title is student. And that's no. been my big frustration because I was a, I was a conservatory instructor, and I was a professor. I was in mathematics. I was adjuncting as a mathematician. No one should and, ever have to adjunct. That is, yeah, it is crap work for like, I mean, it's, it's just awful pay. Yeah. Like no one should have to go through that. But my title technically was professor. Yeah, and so, yeah, mine so too. For, like, it was one of the things when I, you know, went back and did my second master's, it was like, oh God, I don't miss this whole being a student thing. Yeah, it, it's criminal to pay someone who has, who's got like, um, so much experience and like a master's degree or well, a PhD, is, like, so little. I have more experience at this point than like a fresh PhD who's never taught outside of graduate assistantship. Yeah. Like I've yeah. held instructor positions beyond those. It's just gauging the value in these positions is extremely subjective. There's no one set way that an institute will do it. Yeah. And um. Well, in my experience too, because um. Especially in the music world, you don't have a lot of schol like scholars in it. Um, the large body of shoot, the large body of musicians are musicians or their educators, and so those who are uh, self-proclaimed academic musicians are extremely full of themselves. So I have to just say it. They're just and they don't have they've uh, yeah, they, they have a taste have... of the humanities research and yeah. they kind of it, it's uh, they have inflated egos. God, I imagine if any of this gets out. Anyway, but I'm, I'm gonna speak candidly because there is a certain, um, because I was a STEM person, I did a lot of research, a lot of research in my undergrad. So I already had an experience. Okay, I got a, a, a squadron. Yeah, what the hell is going on here? I, I don't actually know. Oh. <laughs> Whoa, Nelly. Are these like the Cletuses of this universe of the punies? I, I don't actually know what's going on. They walked all over us. Interesting. Ah, you've lost. Okay. How did you lose them? No. I have you to did back. lose them. Well, yeah, I left them behind. Mm, okay. I have to find a way to bring them all. Okay, so I have to go. Good God. Anyway. Oh yeah, so um. I, I just remember when I first entered academic music, like I had all these credentials, all of these credentials, and people just refused to, they, like, a lot of people just couldn't believe that. Or I just remember, um, this was uh, before I met my husband, like a long time ago, I remember I was doing a summer, like, performing workshop, like one of those things that people do, but, um, ah, uh, god, I'm so, like, focused. And I remember meeting uh, someone who was doing her PhD in music theory. And I remember telling her, oh, I've been like interested in kind of heading in that direction. Okay, so I have to bring these doofuses. Use the pipes. Yeah. Will name? they go in the water? They won't go in the water. Oh. All right, so I just have to find a, a path. Should be easy enough. Let's try going from here. Um, and I just remember how gatekeepy she was. It's like, you have to do a lot of research and are you sure you're going to know what you're doing? And I just remember thinking like, yeah, I, I have experience researching like quite a bit. I'm actually technically published. 
And um, she just got really like stony and silent, like, well, my gatekeeping didn't work, that kind of thing. It was really hard. It's really hard well, to describe. You, yeah, there's a lot of that in. Oh, I should probably actually heal. Musical academics. Yeah, and, and so, she was I think it all and... it all comes from like the, the music theory for one. The field is extremely young. Well, they can't bear the fact that there are people. Yeah, and that's the thing it's is because insecure. it's so young. It's insecure about itself, and a lot of the scholars are also insecure because they know deep down that they don't really have the kind of scholarship training that a lot of people in actual like research fields have. Not to dismiss music theory as a research field, but it's extremely young. And um, it, when when you're that young, you have a lot to prove. Yeah. And it often comes out as a gatekeeping and uh, lots of insecurities. Yeah, so. yeah. And then my other, when I, um, when I did my like master's in music, I'd already had a master's in English with a minor in literature. And that minor in literature meant that I, um, God, what's the word? So I'm blanking out so hard because I'm like uh, both trying can, to play they the can't, game. They can't, they won't come with you? They will, but. Yeah, try, does that power up something? No, this is just backtracking. But I have to get my other, like my main puny, because one got left behind. Um, but yeah, like it's just, there's just so much of the whole, the people can't bear the fact that there are other ways to perform scholarship. Like other musicians just can't bear that. Because for them, it's this new thrilling thing that they were introduced late in their careers. Whereas most people who didn't study music were exposed to Things like the scientific method, how to write a research paper, um, systems of citation, all of that stuff that they just needed to um, know that is just foundational to a core curriculum, undergraduate curriculum that most musicians just don't get accustomed to. So it kind of gets to people's heads. And I, and yeah, I saw and it a, a lot. And most they have like an intro to humanities yeah. and like writing stuff, but they don't really engage it in depth. No. It's like music theory, there's no like, there's, there's not, Undergraduate music theory courses, for example, rarely have you like writing extensively. It's usually just like like musical grammar exercises, maybe some model composition and ear training and stuff like that, but you're not really like writing a lot. Yeah. I don't know many programs that have kids writing. So, you know, uh, a lot of music theorists are actually failed musicians because they, they don't want to give up the, they're good at like the music part. Um, but they didn't quite make it as performers, so they go into musical academics, and uh, you know, they, yeah. they just don't—they don't have the writing chops, and they think they do. But that is—that is a thing. Writing is very difficult, and you have to work at it. It's not something that you're just like kind of born with. It's a craft. But anyway, yeah, a PhD is just kind of like, I mean, it's definitely something to be proud of, but I never really got that sense of like, uh, like thrill or excitement or like, it wasn't as rewarding as I thought it was going to be like getting one because I know deep down that it's, it's just this like hazing ticket that I had to like, I had to go through all this shit to basically do the same job that I was doing as a graduate student, but get paid more to do it. Yeah. And I'm passionate about teaching. I enjoy the research that I do. And I am filling gaps in research. There's definitely something there. I know, I think yeah. you need to blow on it. Yeah, I I'm aware. There we go. Okay. I'm here to s store? Yeah, you could store items and you can collect them anyway. Okay. The, my brain read it as I'm here to like, they turned the, instead of shop, they just put it as store. Like a verb. 
Mini Mr. Mini? Oh. That's useful. What's he do? Uh, he makes them tiny and lowers their attack. I'm gonna to take oh, a nice. chance. Okay, no. That's really good. Yeah, I would I do like I would like to make changes to how yeah. wherever wherever I am, like how um like well, undergraduate like music curricula are is kind of developed. Because it's it's a little archaic right now. My big thing too for me, um th that you know, and this is just my ego talking, is um I have oh, he's so cute. I have five degrees, and I have helped multiple people successfully complete PhDs um, through just coaching, tutoring, editing papers and dissertations, checking methods, checking styles, because I have a large familiarity with that, and I have a very strong understanding of the level of doctoral research. I don't have a doctorate myself, <laughs> and that's still something that, like, it just... You're, you're not really missing much. Oh, well... Uh... I, I totally get it, but yeah. Oh, you're gonna get him? Get who? What am I doing? He was a harmless little guy and now you're gonna get him. Oh, I wasn't really paying attention. It's just, I'm just like expressing the, uh, the, the, just the very much arbitrariness of the whole system. What's this? Yeah. That, um, and it also does come down to like how much money you have. As I will never forget being in my master's program, I had no support. I didn't have like anybody helping me financially. I was completely on my own um, for that. And the eternal frustration with that meant that, um, like I just, if, if, I may, if, I, if I may share this, but yeah, I just remember my friends telling me, oh, they're running low on money. So their parents like sent them, no questions asked, like $3,000 and like, oh my God. Like, do you realize how privileged you are? Like we made 900 a month and that's what I lived on. And when my rent check was cut, I had whatever remained to get through the rest of the month, which usually meant that my like grocery budget was like $20. And if I had like an emergency medical bill and I had many of those, I was um, out of luck. And I was going to food banks and nobody understands that because most of our peers were wealthier and Okay, I'm back here, but I can't. You gotta kill them all. Well, I can't because I need the um, I need the. You gotta I have bring to bring the the pippies. Okay. I'm like also not really paying attention. Yeah, I know let's I let's try be. to figure this out. It's a puzzle. But. Yeah, I felt like that unique position of like extreme financial distress, which a lot of graduate students go through. But a lot of graduate students like to play the aesthetic of the, oh, I'm so poor. Like so many of our peers did that. But that honestly like was a little infuriating for me because it's like you have your parents are helping you. I, and my, you know, my, my family was just not in a position where they could help. And that's OK. I'm not faulting them. Our, our family's been through so many hardships, but I didn't have that kind of help. So to hear. um yeah. Okay. So, they're on this other side. And that that thing isn't a transporter no, of any kind. It's not. It's just a summoner. It's got to do something though. Can you try hammering that platform in the middle? That looks very hammerable. Like where the bubbles are supposed to be coming out. Hammering the thing in the middle? I mean, I could try, but I don't think that's gonna work. It just looks so like. It does. Like it, it's corked. It, it does. Or something. Yeah. Okay, where are the other punies? I don't they, know. they were here. Oh, I left them like way behind. Hey, let's go grab these other assholes. <laughs> they might be in this room. I don't think so. I think you need to whistle for him to get them all back. Call the punies. Yeah. Ah! That's cute. 
Okay. So what you need really need to do is just grab that guy and take him to the end and then have him whistle to call them all over. I, well, I can't, but I don't I know, have... but like, that would be so much... It would the be. The game logic is very flawed. But okay, I don't I, I have that sunstone thing. Oh. I, I should figure out where the hell that is. Yeah. Who would have thought that talking and trying to focus on a game at the same time there, would be so hard? There, okay, this is where I left it. The beauty orb! Okay, so I've got all the punies together again. Let's try this. But yeah, um, I, I'm, all, I'm also torn because as, as an academic person, I am very like passionate about academics and my lifelong dream has been to obtain a, a PhD, but at the same time, I also recognize the system these days is a business first and foremost. And it's a business whose product happens to be this idea of education, but it means it creates some things and my, my current time is to sort of just make peace with that because um down the road eventually i do plan on getting a phd but i'm also just so leery because it comes with so much hierarchy bullshit and it's just the hierarchy itself is kind of whatever but it's just one of those am i too burned out to want to play the hierarchy nonsensical game and put myself in that degrading position that is student yeah um, especially after all the like with the after the experience and and I don't mean to I, I'm not I, I'm trying I'm not I, I don't mean to have an inflated ego or anything like that about it but there is for me this component of like a lot of different people can be classified as students but have like killer experience and be really impressive in what they do and then you equally get students who are just complete imbeciles they all they know was what they did in undergrad and they knew how to they knew how to get their a's and um but they're like they are stupid <laughs> like it's just what does that mean to say no it's just i mean it's just un unfortunately just uh i think so the where the bubbles come out mm -hmm. in that room it looks like something has to be done to the environment in there. I, yeah, I just have to so, figure out what. Yeah, if you go down that pipe. Yeah. If you put jump jump Mario to the middle standalone platform there. Yeah, sure. It I keep... even has the swirly on it. It does. Let me let me see. Can he super smash that? I don't think so. No. I feel like it, it almost seems like that has to come out somehow. Well, Can sure. she blow it from like one side? Like from the other side? I mean like um, stand on one of the ledges. Oh, I like wonder jump if she can and... blow the punies. Oh, she can blow the punies. Okay. You know what? You are onto something. So first I'm going to do this. Okay. Won't that contain them? That will contain them. But I mean, like, they won't be able to be blown because there's like a force field there. That's okay. Oh! <laughs> okay. So they need to be going back up and then you have to blow the bubbles. Yeah. There you go. This is so dumb, but also like kind of adorable. Well, this room was so unique, you know. It was like it, it, something had to be done in here. Why didn't that guy go? Maybe stand back a little bit. Well, I'm trying to blow him. There I actually needed to be closer. Okay. Okay. Shit. Ugh. All right, I've got him. You did. I've got all the little dummies. Now you can go. Okay. And do the fight. Okay, cause uh, what's her name? Free, furry, flurry, Madam Be careful flurry. here. Yeah. You don't want them to fall. Oh, 
There you go. I think this is it. I think I know why I like this place so much. What's it's that? not just like the icy like kind of aesthetic with like the white trees and leaves and stuff. It's the uh it looks like an aquarium, like in the background. It's charming. It's and I cozy. love aquariums. What's happening? I think you won. Oh. Now I have to destroy the Jabby High Fortress. Okay. Are they just gonna do it? I think so. Oh, great. But this gets us the blue key. Yeah. Now I have all or my something. keys. All right, we did it. Great. That looks like you have to hammer it. I'm sure there's more to this room, but I think for now they want us to do the... To backtrack complete. Oh, okay, thank goodness. And they'll never come back and that's that. And what's gonna happen to us? And hey, by the way, what's that thing you've been holding on to so tightly? Um, <laughs> it's a mushroom. It's definitely a mushroom. Oh, not to be, you know, rude, but it looks all dry and wrinkly and gross. <laughs> Is this on uh, purpose? This has to be deliberate. Someone drew that. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, I, I know. I picked it so I could give it to my brother <laughs> to eat. <laughs> okay, bro, it's time to eat a dick. But then I got captured and stuck in here, and after a few days, it dried out. Oh, really? Great, cool great story, story, bro. <laughs> anyway, don't worry so much. All my complaining aside, I'm sure Punio will return. Anyway, that was very random. I think it was just telling you, hey, come back here so you can get this thing. Yeah, but that was so dang random. So random. Oh, you've got your fart towel back in. My fart towel? Yeah. Well, it makes the cushion a little bit softer for my, cause I have like really bad back issues. Did you uh, write anything in your massage therapy notes about back issues or did you leave it blank? Yeah, but generic. What'd you write? I don't remember. It was oh. just like lower back pain. Gotcha. You know, like every adult over 30. Did you mention your shoulder history? No. Okay. I know. I, I don't think they need to know that. Ugh. Just jump. He can call him back if he needs to. You don't need all these guys anymore. That's technically true, yeah. Uh, but then again, like, it's still giving me the counter. So? That's making you me have the think key. I need them. But yeah, I don't know. I guess we'll find out. Do you remember how to get back? Yeah. Uh -huh. It's just up and down. It's pretty straight. It's not really a labyrinth then. There we are. We brought the key, we're opening the cell now. <sighs> Big brother. Little Patsuni. 
Are you all right? You're not hurt, are you? No, I'm fine. No, I'm f thank heavens. Hey, big brother, I have something for you. I meant. I had to give this to you sooner, but here's a dick. <laughs> They're your favorite, <laughs> aren't are they? Dicks are your favorite, aren't they? That's what kind of got dried out. Um. Oh, Sorry. nasty. <laughs> well, he, uh, he did not hesitate. Uh, not at all. It was a very delicious di uh, very yummy. Give me a hug. Okay. Alright, are we done yet? 90 punies have joined your party. Now there are 101. This is... Can... Will so they intense. always be available to just chuck at your enemies? Uh, this really is Pikmin. Like, what the hell? Well, I think they must have known that when they did this. How old well, is Pikmin? Um, I'm not sure. I want to say at least like 15 years, maybe. I feel like it started on the GameCube. I could be very wrong on that. There are four Pikmin games though. And Pikmin 3 was on the Wii U. And the Wii U is like... About a decade old. So I'm gonna go with 15 years. There's probably a Pikmin on the Wii as well, because that, just design-wise, that would be a perfect game on the Wii because of the chucking motion that you do with the remote, yeah. like this, to fling them, would be um, very amenable to the, to how you would play the Wii. That'd be really fun. Yeah. But I just don't know. All right. Uh, do you want to next time it? Yeah, next time on Sony Neos Gaming, uh, what what's gonna happen? I don't actually know. Where do we take these things? But the peonies help you guys will find that crystal star in no time. I think it's at the very bottom of this tree. So okay, we're, we're going to the very bottom of the tree. Stay tuned, and we will get there next time. Hope you have a lovely day. Um, you can join this channel as a member to get exclusive content. We also have a Patreon where you can watch an exclusive monthly video where sometimes we do like in, in addition to that like entirely new like Sun and Eos like gaming series plus stuff you won't see on YouTube we show our faces yeah and the I mean, camera we've shown on. our faces a couple times on YouTube too but yeah but we have more the, face yeah face, more, more faceage you get to see what we really look like <laughs> yeah it might shock you it's gonna really shock you we'll see you next time okay